We're talking with Chet Fuller at iStat. Chet, could you give us an idea of how the C-Series pro program is going on right now against the timeline that you have for the program? Sure. Well, um, so our EIS has always been December 2013, and we continue to drive toward that EIS. Um, many of the big chunks are coming together, so we have the, uh, the nose section, the center wing box, the first set of wings will uh, come together in the middle of the year, the fuselage is, is, uh, is basically in one piece and headed toward Mirabeau. Um, and the uh, Full Systems Integration Lab is, uh, is going to be, it's, it's been commissioned and many of the subsystems on that lab are, are commissioned. And so that should be up and running in sort of full test about mid-year. And, and the Iron Bird process? That's the, the Iron Bird process is critical to success. So this is the Full Systems Integration Lab for the airplane. And so every system will be replicated with production standard hardware. Now we simulate flight loads and we simulate uh, the engine, but the, uh, the accessory gearbox and all of the functions, the hydraulic system, electric power system, everything is on board the airplane. And so this is where we really will uh, be able to demonstrate that the wire and bundles do in fact fit, uh, all of the subsystems do work, the integration between the systems uh, is, work, uh, is working, and we can do testing continuously. And that's really where you, where you transition flight test from flight test for discovery to flight test for validation. I mean, the goal is for flight test to be validation, not a period of discovery that then has a years of fixes. Right, so that's, that's the goal. The parts that you described that have come in, the, the wings and the nose and mm -hmm. the other sections, how, how, does that, how, do they, how do they look for fit so far? Well, you know, the, so airplanes, all airplanes, uh, got way better with, uh, you know, CAD CAM systems uh, from design. Now, we've gone even a farther step. Uh, not only do we use completely, you know, 3D digital designs like everyone in the airplane business, um, but we are also using full-scale wooden mock-ups of each of the large components and checking for uh, fit for installers, you know, how do I install this radio? How do I install this this box racks or coupler? Can I actually get? Can I actually fit? Is it too much over my head? And, you know, is the so we're so while three D images can really help, um, you have to actually have something physical to demonstrate. And the production teams are are that work will be key for us to be able to ramp our rates quickly and come down the learning curve fast. And so the production teams are, are really uh, engaged and they're coming up with you know, great new ideas every day about how to make production smoother and better and how to balance the workload in each of the stations. The, the new factory, um, how's that process progress going? It's uh, factories, right? So we have uh, you know, the, the, the Belfast so. facility is all new, right? right? So that's where the wings are going to be made and that is beautiful. That is a, that is a state of the art facility. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Caratero is where we're building a, 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 the uh, wire bundles and many other things. Um, we have um, uh, the nose section aft empennage is coming from uh, Saint Laurent, which is a very old facility, but the the, the area where the C series is going to be built is all new, all robotic, and, and uh, probably the highest state of uh, automated production in aviation anywhere by far. And so those facilities are coming together well. The first low-rate initial production um, facility in Mirabel is, is also uh, up and running. Tooling's being installed, and the first pieces are showing up in the door. A lot of the airplane's promise is dependent on the engines. What can you tell us about the, the engine so far that you've discovered? Well, so first and foremost, uh, the C-Series engine's a 12-to-1 bypass, where some of the other competitors... Uh, Certainly the, the A320neo is a 10 to 1, and we're not sure what the Boeing uh, bypass is yet. Of course, I'm not sure they're sure either. But uh, it, the engine has about over 700 hours of flight test on it. We've substantiated the thrust uh, levels, and we've also substantiated fuel burn. And we think uh, right now it's very, we have very good indications that we'll be at, uh, at SPEC SFC at EIS. That's a highly unusual situation. Well, uh, you know, even... It, it's highly unusual, depending on how uh, how strictly you measure, right? So, remember, in a wide-body aircraft, if you're off one and a half, two percent, that's that's a huge fuel number. 
um, so you know we're we're well in we believe that we will be inside of that and so that's that's a, that's very good um, but even with that you know every two to three years you're gonna you're gonna improve you know you have sort of continuous product improvement both for reliability maintainability and fuel burn that's just the nature of the engine business today at uh, at Istat we heard Boeing and Airbus talk extensively about how compelling their offerings are and by omission talk about C-Series and really the, the 100 to 149 seat market. Um, what are they not seeing that you see? Uh, well, they're not seeing, uh, they're seeing way too much cost in their own infrastructure to build smaller airplanes, I believe. Uh, and, you know, if you think about it, uh, there's a continuum of demand from bigger than, something bigger than A380, if you could build it, they would come, right? There are markets that would support an airplane much bigger than A380, and something way smaller than a 50-seater. And so it's, uh, it's not, and that continuum of demand is continuous. Um, it's not uniform, but it is continuous from very small to very large. So if you can economically serve any slice of that continuum, then you've got a great potential for a market. All right? So. But if your small 737 and your small A320, 319, um, really can't deliver better economics, you would just go buy the big one, right? Because all of the trip costs are still high and the seat costs are still high. But that's not the circumstance with the C-Series, right? So the C-Series allows you to have basically A320-like seat cost with trip costs that are almost equivalent to the, uh, to the EJ-1. So, you know, 20 to 25 percent lower trip costs than a 320 and equivalent seat cost on an airplane that is, uh, you know, 30 to 35 seats larger. That's powerful. That means you can serve a lot of markets that today you had to walk away from. Yet Boeing and, and Airbus are really confident that the shrinks of the base model is going to be competitive. How do shrinks they, of which base model? The, the, let's say the MAX 8. Oh. And let's say the, the 319 Neo, which is a shrink from the 320. Yeah. How, 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 what, are the, what are the ways that they can push you out of the market? Well, uh, I don't think there's any way you, you, they can push us out of the market. I mean, let's be clear. Uh, Bombardier is the third largest airframer in the world. We're number one in trains by far. We're number one in business aircraft by far. We will be number three in commercial aircraft, perhaps forever in a relative sense. Uh, because Boeing and Airbus are very large, and then we're the next largest, and then sort of Embraer. Um, they, the natural progression of the industry is they're going to build bigger airplanes, and they're going to continue to get bigger, which makes it harder and harder for them to deliver a low-cost uh, small airplane. Uh, ourselves and Embraer are going to move up sort of underneath them, and then you know our new entrants are going to move up underneath us, and that's just sort of the natural progression of the industry. Um, you know, that's, there, there are many reasons why, as you grow, you have to, you have to attend to the business that is core to you. Based on what you've just said, does Bombardier stay at the size CS300, or do you start looking at something bigger then? Well, I think if you build an airplane, um, you always contemplate how large that airplane may be. Uh, I think that's fair. Everyone does. Um, but right now, if for us... Job number one is to deliver at EIS with the CS100. And job number two is to deliver at EIS the CS300. Fill those order books and, and make sure that those aircraft are successful. And so that's what we're doing now. Um, you know, we, we'll study airplanes forever. That's what, that's what aircraft companies do. Last quick question then mm -hmm. for you. When you look at the U.S. airlines that are going to have to start thinking about replacements for the MD-80 series, across the board, Delta, sure. yeah. American. Yeah. How compelling is your offering for those airlines in the C-Series? Well, I won't speak specifically to Delta American, but let me speak uh, sort of generally to anyone operating a legacy airplane and um, anyone who would like to go into any market that is, uh, uh, that's smaller than Chicago, New York, right? Uh, seat cost is every day. Right? Seat risk is every single day. The problem with the airline industry all around the world, it doesn't matter where you are, is there's a Tuesday and Wednesday every week. And that means for many days of the week and many times during the day, 
you're flying an airplane that's too big. And so if you can get the if you can get better economics with less risk, then you should do that. You know the the problem is that you know 180 seat aircraft. If you can fill 180 seat aircraft every day, you ought to be flying a 180 seat airplane. But the fact of the matter is most people can't, and most markets will not support multiple frequencies 180 seat airplane. That's a big airplane. So the market for your your sweet spot is really we say good. we say the market for the C series is about 7,000 airplanes, right? All told, right? So that's a uh, that's coming down, you know, some of that is served by uh, larger airplanes coming down and some of that is served by smaller airplanes coming up. But that's that market space, the demand in that space is for about 7,000 airplanes. Thank you. You're welcome.